Hey everyone, uh, Alex from 4Gamers here, and want to welcome you to the second episode of Notes to Self. Um, so as you've picked up by now, Andrew and I are doing alternate uh, podcasts every other week. Uh, one of us taking uh, sometimes a topic, sometimes it's just more free flow, uh, like Andrew's. And mine this week will definitely be free flow, like Andrew's was last week. Um, but I am going to kind of focus on at least one thing, as there were three questions when I was teasing the idea of doing an actual theme. So... I'll have to at least address those, so you'll get a little bit of my own ranting on that. Um, but even though these, there was a couple questions that were actually asked, uh, two questions that were asked directly of Andrew, I kind of want to give my two cents in, on it. And whether you like it or not, you're going to get it, because damn it, I can. Um, okay, so the two questions that Andrew was asked last week, and he really spent a lot of time talking about, was what game series did he want to see come back? And which one did he want to see go away? And so when I first saw that question, I had answers right away. And Andrew talked about ones that I hadn't thought of. So I'm just going to kind of quickly talk about what I wanted. And then we'll see where that goes. So as far as a game series, I want to come back. I really want to see the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic series come back. And I know there's the online MMO for the computer, Star Wars The Old Republic. But it's not the same. I miss that in-depth RPG, Bioware, and then Obsidian, but that core Star Wars game that was so much fun. Nothing like become choosing your class and your gender and being this Jedi and choosing whether you want to be a good Jedi or a dark Jedi and all those things. And, oh my gosh, I loved those games. And in particular, I'd really love to see even just a remaster of those games in kind of the more modern style as it is now. But I really think what they did there was something phenomenal, and I'd like to see that kind of return of those kinds of games. Um, on that same note, though, on the other end of the spectrum, I would really love to see Banjo-Kazooie make a return. Heck, I've been waiting for Banjo-3E since the second game came out, and I've played, <laughs> I've played Nuts and Bolts, I can admit that, not a great game. And I've actually played the Game Boy Advance game, Grunty's Revenge, which everyone seems to forget exists. Um, small time game, but oh my gosh, it was pretty much like a Banjo-Kazooie game on the Game Boy Advance. So even if they expanded that and made it into a you know full-fledged 3D platformer collect-a-thon like they did the older games, I'd be a little happy with, happier with that than you know getting another Nuts and Bolts type game. But I'd like to see that series revived, only because that was so good. And Andrew mentioned this, and I just have to correct him on this. So Donkey the Donkey Kong Country platformer did return. Um, it was for the Wii and then the Wii U and the 3DS. The Donkey Kong Country Returns. Um, that is a Donkey Kong Country 2D, but in the 3D style platformer. So those do exist, but they're far away from their original games. Um, and he did mention Donkey Kong 64. I would love to see a Donkey Kong 64-like game come back, which goes back into that collectathon like Banjo Kazooie. Thank you, Rare, for that wonderful, <laughs> that wonderful era of games like Conquer <laughs> and Banjo Kazooie and Donkey Kong. Like those were my childhood. Those games were a big part of who I was, and so I really would love to see those kinds of games return, especially. We need to bring the love for Chunky and Lanky Kong, and to an extent, Tiny Kong. But what about Dixie? Dixie deserves some credit from the Donkey Kong Country series. I just, I'd like to see them return. I really would. Um, I would also, and this will play into my thing I'm going to talk about later, but I'd really like to see the Pokemon... Coliseum and Stadiums series return. Um, for those of you that don't know the difference between the two, and you're like, well, they're just the same game. No. Pokemon Stadium was the classic just 
battle all the Pokemon that are in the game, and then we're going to give you some mini games, <clears throat> and we're going to give you a trainer tower and tournaments in the game, and that was fun. Uh, battle Revolution for the Wii kind of did that, but it was very different, and it, it didn't quite work out, and I'd like to see something like that return. I mean, we definitely got Pokemon, which was a nice step up, and they could take qualities of that and make that into um, kind of a 3D Pokemon Stadium-esque game. <clears throat> I don't think anyone would be really complaining about that. But I, I I would really like to see that kind of classic game for Pokemon come back. And the other one, Coliseum. Coliseum was a spin-off RPG title for the GameCube. It was Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness. The only two games. They introduced Shadow Pokemon, Shadow Lugia. They are amazing games. They really are. And if they were done with all the current Pokemon and all the updated graphics and the way that they've been going, and if they follow kind of a similar plot line that Pokemon Black and White did, or even X and Y did, I could imagine that a revamped new Pokemon Coliseum game would be amazing. And I'm sure it would sell very well, especially for old diehard fans as well as new fans that are like, ooh, that sounds like a cool game. So I'd like to see those return. Um... And this is just a, a weird kind of thought, and it just kind of happened randomly. That's the joy of this unscripted stuff. <clears throat> but I'd like to see a return of, like, the classic Kirby games. Like, I have I have Star Allies. I've played... The only one I didn't play in the last 10 years worth of Kirby games truly <laughs> was uh, Planet Robo Kirby or whatever the heck that was. Uh Robobot or something like that. Um, that was the only game in the last 10 years of Kirby games I didn't get to play. And there are always Kirby games at the core, but there's something to be said about some of the classic, you know, animal buddies teaming up. Um, I'd like to see the return of that 64 uh, Crystal Shards game where you could combine powers um, and then add the animal buddies and what do the combined powers do. Like, I'd like to see that return. Star Allies was amazing, don't get me wrong. But I'd like to see something like that return. I'd also like to see more of a classic, like, Kirby Superstar game. I know we got the revamped Kirby Superstar Ultra for the DS, but I'd like to see, like a real Switch title just for that. And on that note, I'd like to just do a shout-out. Thank you, Nintendo, for, you know, returning to the Mario Party glory. Uh, the last few Mario Party games have not been spectacular, but Super Mario Party returned to that kind of the roots of what a good Mario Party game is. So that was really cool. Uh, honestly, I, I think those are kind of the big series I want to see return. Most of the other series I really like are currently still alive and going. Andrew's mentioned the other ones that I would have said. So uh, combining the two of our lists together gives you a pretty comprehensive list of games we'd like to see. And I would definitely like to throw out just a side note that I would really, really kind of like to see, you know, Halo move a little bit faster than it is, but it's, it's still going, so I'm not going to complain about it. And uh, while Mass Effect and Dragon Age are both on kind of hiatus, they, they aren't dead properties as much as everyone wants to think they are. Uh, Bioware and the people there have admitted more than once they're not done with them yet. So they're just in hiatus. I'd like to see them return sooner rather than later, but I understand production times and as well as, you know, releasing Anthem. As far as what games do I want to go away, I don't really want any game to go away, um, but I'm not a big fan. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I'm not a big fan of Fortnite. Um, much, much like Andrew, I don't like the online exclusive games. I don't like that just PvP stuff. It, it's, it's annoying to me, um, partly because a lot of them are also pay to win. So you can spend hundreds of dollars to become one of the top players and get all the best stuff, and then you dominate the multiplayer and no one wants to play. Great for you, but for someone that wants to just casually jump onto an online game, it sucks. Uh, same thing with, you know, people that don't do anything except play the online game. Like, great, I'm glad you can do that, but when there's an unbalanced thing where you get thrown into online games with people that do that, 
and you're someone that, you know, has a full-time job or two jobs and you're doing other things and you don't have the time, when you decide, oh, I want to play online, immediately it's unbalanced, um, which is why Andrew likes For Honor because while there is that kind of thing, it's a little more balanced, and which is why I actually, if I had to pick a multiplayer game I don't hate, it would be Halo because there's no exclusive, well, the newer one, Halo 5, for sure does, but the older games, it wasn't, oh, you you pay for the best version, you get the best equipment. No, everyone has essentially the same equipment. It's just how do you play? And that's a real skill base, and that's that's a lot of fun, and I enjoy that. Um, so I would like to see less of those exclusively online games. I'd also like to see a lot of those series that come out with, hey, buy our new game. It's something that you've loved the entire series. Oh, we're going to make it exclusively multiplayer. Uh, that really it ruins a series for a lot of the old classic diehard fans that have followed the series since its infancy. Uh, only a couple series have really done that to me, and right now I can't think of any of them, but I know I've played a few, and it, it's just it's sad to see games decide, oh, you know, we're just going to do an all-online thing and take away the story that you've grown to love, and it, it feels like a slap in the face, so... I'd like to see less of those. <clears throat> and, again, an unpopular opinion, and it's only because, well, I'm not a big fan of the game series, and I don't truly want to see it go away, but for sake of argument, I'd like to see the Call of Duty franchise just take a break. Uh, it's almost like, uh, what, what do we call it? Series fatigue. Um, it's something that we discussed during one of our round tables, but and it might have been even after the round table, but series fatigue. Call of Duty has so many games, and I just I feel like they need to take a break. Um, I know there hasn't been one, uh, what, in the last, like, two years, maybe, two or three. So if, if they don't release another one, good, they're, they're on the right path. But I think they've been releasing too frequently, those games, and they need to take a little spacing. So <clears throat> that's kind of my just general thoughts on that stuff. Um, the, at least those questions, I should say, because that's confusing enough as it is. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick before I get into, I guess, my focus, if there was a focus, um, I want to talk about video game movies because Andrew and I have both have had these conversations many times, and he's currently watching Resident Evil with his wife, and I, over the last year and a half, two years, I've rewatched a lot of the classic video game movies and I own a decent number of them and I definitely agree with his statement if you separate them from the video game they're decent and sometimes great action movies but when it comes to turning it directly f to a movie from the video game it, it, it loses a lot of its luster and part of that problem is which I'm actually studying in school. Um, I'm getting my second master's currently. And what I'm looking at is adaptation, and adaptations are dangerous. They can be really good or really bad, and people that weigh it simply on whether or not they were f faithful or loyal to the source material is not the best measure, but it is the most popular measure. And so I've tasked it to myself to go back and rewatch some of those adaptation movies and see how bad and how good they actually are. And I would say a lot of the video game adaptation movies are really actually good. They're just not as faithful as we want them to be to the games. So I think if we reevaluated how we looked at them, I think they would be much better. Like Andrew said, the Resident Evil movies aren't terrible. But if once you put Resident Evil on there... It's a whole different thing, and now it's not as great. Same thing can be said with, uh, I recently rewatched Silent Hill for the first time in probably since it came out, and that was over this last uh, summer, actually, the summer of 2018. And I was just more or less shocked. I was like, wow, I forgot how good this was as a, a decent semi-modern horror movie, but when you consider it to be a Silent Hill movie, it's kind of bad. So I decided to reevaluate looking at it from that perspective of how faithful is it and to how is it as a movie. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. But I will note that the Super Mario Brothers movie is still a bad movie, no matter how you look at it. 
I love it. I own it. And Andrew will admit, it's fun to watch, but damn if it's not terrible. If you haven't seen it, uh, stay tuned on the channel. We might we might do a semi-real-time watch it. and Yeah, well, we'll talk about it. We'll at least talk about it for sure. You'll hear us. Um, but yeah. So movies, as far as video games, are really interesting. And I like seeing them. But at the same time, there are certain series I don't want to see as being made into movies. Um, and Andrew was right with the Halo thing. Halo, every time they've done their little mini-series and like one-off movies, great. They are really good. Because they don't focus on the one main story that we all know. They focus on different parts. And that's, I think, what we need to do going forward with video game movies. Stop making it about the main character. Make it about side stories. And then just in pretty much increase the size of your extra lore for the series. And that'll actually, you know, benefit overall. So that's my piece on movies. Um, you're, I'm sure you'll hear more talk about movies throughout the channel's history only because well andrew and i both have lots of movies we love movies we talk about movies okay so now i guess kind of getting on to a point track uh based off of some questions specifically two questions that were asked by andrew and one question that was asked by another fan and i apologize that i didn't write down who specifically asked it i uh, i know it was on instagram um, so apologies there that I didn't write it down before I started doing this podcast. Um, so I'm going to answer Andrew's questions first only because it's important. Uh, so, and it's not that your question is not important. It's just that Andrew's question is very poignant. Which is better, Pokemon or Kingdom Hearts? So Andrew asked that question only because he knows that those are two of my most favorite series in the entire world. And I will make the claim right now that my, for me which is better is Pokemon. And I will explain that whenever he wants. Um, but the short and the sweet is Pokemon's been around for my entire life. Well, 1996 when it came out in Japan, so 97. So less than my entire life. But it's been around my entire, you know, game playing life. And so it's, it's very influential for me. And to answer his other question, why is Digimon superior? Digimon is not superior. That is definitely a... It's an opinion. And he can feel that Digimon is better, and that's fine. And I can feel that Pokemon is better, and that's fine. And neither one of us is right, and neither one of us is wrong. It's just a matter of opinion. I happen to prefer the design of Pokemon better. I like the way their games are set up. I like uh, the way the show runs better than I like Digimon. I watched Digimon. I thought it was fun. I also watched Monster Rancher and thought it was fun. But both of those are just essentially Pokemon knockoffs. They're, they're not quite the same staying power as the previous. So... Yeah, people can make the argument, you know, Agumon and Charmander are very similar. Well, yeah, but that's pretty much making mountains out of molehills. So, again, matter of opinion. For me, Digimon is not superior. Uh, sorry, superior. I keep saying superior only because that's a Pokemon. See? Pokemon is on my brain 24-7. Of the 809, which now that the 8th generation has been announced, there's... 10, 11, 12, 800, I know all 812 Pokemon by heart, um, so I'm going to be a little biased on that one, and again, I'm pretty sure it's Pokebrat, but I, I'm not positive that it was you that asked this, so if it was you, great, you got a shout out, if not, sorry for the person that I actually unintentionally didn't shout out um so this question i thought was quite interesting if pd was a po pd piranha we're talking about our director that's a long story or our producer i guess i should say if pd was a pokemon what would his moveset be and what is his evolution so it kind of fits more with a smash thing because you know pd piranha is part of smash he's part of a final smash but so i'm gonna go with pd being a standard piranha plant Piranha Plant is already kind of in the game. Um, if you wanted to be technical, it's closer to the Weep and Bell, Victory Bell line. So PD, I would argue, is more in the Victory Bell era. So it's definitely like a final evolution. Um, but given that the Piranha Plant is kind of smaller and weaker, I'd say it's probably the Weep and Bell area. 
So it's probably like a stage two Pokemon. But if it was a Pokemon, um, it would definitely be at least a pure grass type in its early stage and go grass poison as it gets stronger. And I definitely think it would have moves like Acid, Acid Spray, Vine Whip, uh, <laughs> Leaf Storm. Uh, I would definitely give it Leaf Blade only because that's a ridiculous attack and I love it. Um, Razor Leaf, Magical Leaf, Bite, Chomp. <sighs> chomp. Chomp's not an attack. Crunches. Where did I get Chomp? I don't know. Um, but it would definitely have some moves set focused around its mouth, around its leaves leaves wow i don't know where my head is today um but yeah there's definitely gonna be some poison i would also randomly give it rock throw only because of its attack and smash that comes from super mario brothers 3 um if you don't know what i'm talking about uh look up any of the smash ultimate gameplay of pd piranha and his neutral special it's ridiculous but we see those in Super Mario Brothers 3 originally. Um, they also walk on their leaves, which is a weird thing to think about. Um, but yeah, so I definitely think that there'd be some interesting movesets uh, for a Piranha Plant Pokemon evolutionary line. And this kind of lets me bridge the gap between the two things I wanted to talk about. So, Andrew talked about movie adaptations, and I'm talking about Pokemon. So, I just want to talk about the Pokemon movies real quick. If you haven't watched the original, like, four movies, please go and watch them now. That would be Mewtwo Strikes Back, Pokemon the Movie 2000, The Power of One, uh, Pokemon 3, The Movie, The Power of the Unknown, and Pokemon Forever, uh, The Something of the Forest, The Guardian of the Forest? That doesn't sound right. Uh, Pokemon Forever. What was the movie? Uh, anyway, it's the one with Celebi is the fourth one. Those first four ones are fantastic. Not to say the rest of the movies aren't, but those are like the, the core four from the original. Um, I definitely suggest watching them. Uh, also watch the second movie because there is the greatest Pokemon sex joke you will ever hear in the movie. And if you don't get it, then you completely missed it. Uh, just a reminder that there is a Pokemon who is the Crab Pokemon and his name is Krabby. And that is all I'm going to say about that. So watch the second movie, at least for the sex joke. Anyway, so those movies are interesting. But looking at the recent pattern, the last two new movies, the first one... <clears throat> the po uh, Pokemon I Choose You movie, which came out a couple years ago. First time we got Ho-Oh in a movie, um, but it was kind of a reboot of the original series done in a movie, the first couple episodes. So there's that, which is interesting, because it's a remake of something that's already been done. And then the last one was kind of like a soft reboot of the Pokemon movie 2000 with Lugia and the song. So, yeah, it seems like Pokemon is kind of redoing some of their classics. And they announced that the new one is Mewtwo, kind of a Mewtwo Returns thing. And I don't know how I feel about that. I, I love Pokemon, but there are times where I think, you know, we need to change up the series a little bit, get away from where we are. I definitely would argue that we should, you know, find a different protagonist other than Ash. Uh, we've, we've had him for quite a while. Ash needs to take a break. And he's also not the greatest trainer in the world. I love that he got super close to winning the Pokemon League and Pokemon X, Y, and Z. Uh, but I think he needs to retire. I think he needs to get married to Misty and... Let's see some kind of other thing. See a different trainer going off on their own new adventure in a whole new region. I don't want to follow Ash the entire time. Do we love Pikachu? Yes. And are we going to continue to see Pikachu and Ash all the time because Pikachu is the big seller for Pokemon? Yes, of course we are. But I'd like to see a little bit of a change-up. I'd like to see some kind of new character, maybe focus on an old character, getting the spotlight, something along those lines. We just, we don't give enough credit to some of the other characters in the series. And we could easily recreate a whole new character, but we don't. So, yeah. I really like the Pokemon Origins anime. If you haven't seen that, I suggest finding it on YouTube and watching it. The four-part anime they did a few years back. Oh, so good. 
it, it's everything that we wanted in a Pokemon anime that didn't really sugarcoat it as a kid's show. It was more for the longtime fans. It's it's definitely worth a watch if you're interested in Pokemon. Um, I don't really want to take up too much more of your time. I just wanted to at least make sure that this podcast went out. I'm sorry that few less... No, wow, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sorry that we didn't have as many questions this time, and I hope that my rambling and answering questions didn't really... Uh, turn anyone away from these. Uh, I enjoy doing these. These are very therapeutic for me, and I'm sure they're therapeutic for Andrew as well. Uh, I think the next one I'm not going to have any kind of plan, and I just kind of look forward to whatever you guys want to hear. So over the next week and a half, because I usually record these uh, either Thursday night or Friday morning and upload them, and same with Andrew, usually does them Wednesday night into Thursday, just please uh, give us some questions. Send us some things you want to hear us talk about, and we'll be sure to address them. If not, we'll just kind of ramble on, and who knows if you want to listen to us ramble. I mean, if you are if you made it this far, you've listened to me ramble, and I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you guys. You, our fans are awesome. If you are mainly just an Instagram follower, if you're just a uh, Facebook follower, if you're a YouTube follower, whoever you are, we really appreciate you guys. I know Andrew has said it, and I know I'm not quite in the spotlight as much. I prefer the things behind the scenes, but I really appreciate you guys. So thanks for being our followers, and stay tuned. You, you never know what you're going to get with us. We have some cool things planned. Uh, we'll be recording this week, and so you'll see some new stuff showing up in the next month. All right? See you guys.